is something we take for granted. But air pollution is all around us, damaging our health and reducing our quality of life. The Something in the Air project was designed to engage the community of Sorby Bridge in research and experimentation around the subject of air quality. Air monitors were lent to people so they could research the air quality in their homes and outside. The library service worked alongside academics from Manchester University and students at a local school and utilised social media to investigate the issues of air quality in Sorby Bridge. Well, I'm a, a regular visitor to the library and so I picked up a leaflet about the availability of air quality monitors and I was absolutely delighted. As soon as I read that there was going to be a project called Something in the Air running from Sorby Bridge Library, I knew I wanted to be involved. The aim of the project was about engaging local residents to come in to our beautiful local library and use our resources and see that it's a, a place where research is conducted and you can find out more about things. It also was on the back of Sorby Bridge having been designated an air quality management area. So because I live in Sorby Bridge, quite high up off Tewell Lane, I look down some days I open the curtain and there's a cloud inversion there and I wonder what's going on in that air in our deep valley. I got involved in something in the air in Sorby Bridge because I got interested in air quality through the building of an incinerator down the road and so I borrowed a monitor and you can see it sort of second by second and follow, you know, little little changes which are quite quite surprising really. Because we'd all sort of said, you know, we, we don't know what's happening to the air, but now we can find out and that's quite useful. I did already know a little about air quality and pollution before getting involved in the project, um, but not as much as I would have liked to, so getting involved was uh, was really good, really informative. Well, before we started learning about it at school, I didn't know much about air pollution and I wasn't very worried, but now I am. The Something in the Air projects enabled me to, to learn loads more about air quality and the factors that contribute towards it. I think the, the webinar showed how important it is to consider things that you're using in your house, which I hadn't really thought about that much, you know, the pollutants from cleaning products and the air monitor showed me that even the clean air routes that I try to walk regularly are not that clean. I've learned from the project that the air quality even on the hills and the walks around the area in the woods, the air quality is still moderate and never of good quality and that horrified me. A couple of new things that struck me from using the air quality monitors was we had one for inside the home and we were fascinated by just how quickly the, the rate of change of the quality of air inside the home would happen, particularly when you were cooking and things like that or if you had the doors closed. Certainly cooking with uh, any kinds of oils, uh, cooking on uh, the gas cooker or uh, open frying and things like that would change but also just if, as soon as the heat started to change, the air quality would start to change, which I, I had no idea about prior to, the, prior to having the monitor, so that was fascinating. The spike, in, you know, the spike in poor air quality is particularly noticeable, I think, in the autumn when people start lighting fires. Um, wood burners are a particular bugbear. As soon as I can smell lots of smoke in the air, I know that I'm going to be coughing a lot more than I would be and I'm going to be wheezing a lot more than I would be otherwise. And I think, you know, it, it's, it's very difficult to speak to your neighbour and say, look, I'm really sorry, but your wood burner is making my health worse. And that's not an easy conversation to have, but I think it's one that's necessary sometimes. I'm a teacher at a local school and we've been working alongside the library and we were given a few of the air monitors to use in and around the school. So the first thing that we had to do with the year six class at the time was 
work out what's in the air anyway. So there was a lot of teaching going on about just air because we thought it was just oxygen and carbon dioxide, but whoa, we were wrong. <laughs> so much more in there that we didn't even know about. So there was lots of learning together with me and the year sixes. We were practicing using the monitors and learning how to work them. And then we identified spots around our school and the local area that we wanted to investigate and test. So then we planned some investigations and we got out there with the monitors and did some research, action research. It was brilliant to see the year sixes so engaged in something that seemed to matter to them. I was passionate about air quality because as I walked to school, I could smell all the pollution and sometimes I would want to wear a mask, it was that bad. So I got an air quality monitor to test it out. I walked to school using it and I walked back from school using it and the results that I had I used in a PowerPoint to find out how bad it was and it was actually quite bad. The PowerPoint I'm going to present in front of the local MP and he has already given us a grant so we can maybe get a green screen to put on there and I think that might help and suck in the pollution so we're not as affected as we are now at school. I'm Professor Hugh Coe from the University of Manchester and I was involved in Calderdale Clean Air Day events because I was invited to go to a school in Sorby Bridge and uh, talk to the children there uh, about air pollution. The children were fantastic. They learned lots and lots of really important information. They understood how harmful air pollution can be and were really passionate about trying to make a change. And it was fantastic to see that. They were really informed and their questions were brilliant. I learned just how much they know and can be infused and passionate about driving change for improving the air quality that we all breathe. Well, I felt very happy about meeting a real professor because I'd never seen one before and I wanted to see how much he knew about air pollution. He knew lots and what really stands out is how much more pollution cars produce than anything else and the, the brakes on cars like produce more pollution than the actual exhausts. I have a particular interest in pollution in Silby Bridge because it's a big deal for the health of everybody who lives here. There's a big percentage of the population here who have lung diseases such as asthma and COPD and other chronic conditions that are significantly worsened by poor air quality and it's something that affects me and my family and I think we need to ensure that we give our residents the best chance of being as healthy as possible by reducing air pollution in the area. I would like to say that if you live on a main road or somewhere close to a main road you should always try and walk to places like walk to the shops and so you're not adding more pollution to the air quality that's already out there because it's really bad for your health and you could end up having lung disease and cancer because of that. It can be really bad for your health. Well, I think more people should start walking and if possible, not take the car and use public transport more and like sometimes get on your bikes and stuff and just go for a little ride instead of taking your car. Uh, we have made a few changes as a result. Yeah, we have the windows open far more often than we used to, particularly whilst cooking. We try and keep the little lad out of the kitchen to a degree whilst we're cooking, just so he's, he's not kind of getting the worst of the air. We have the door open into the garden far more often. And also because we know now just how quickly it changes inside, uh, the properties outside the properties we try and keep away from main roads and things like that which we did a little anyway but more so now that we've had the monitors and, and we understand the changes. 
Clean Air Calderdale was a response to the incinerator, but also with a sort of realisation that there was more of a problem than just the incinerator. And the more you find out, the more you find out that it's a national thing. So we thought we should set something up that was local. We wanted one of our own, you know, that was specific to our issues. The thing we've done the most of is to stand on the high street on a Saturday morning with a petition, but also with leaflets and information and just talk to people. And we were pleasantly surprised by how well informed people were. If you want to get involved with Clean Air Calderdale, you can come and see us on a Saturday morning on the High Street in Sorby Bridge. We've also got a Facebook page, and if you search for us on Google, you'll find other stuff. I'm a local councillor for Sorby Bridge, and I think it's really important that residents understand that they can contact me if they need to, if they're worried about air pollution. They can also look online um, on the council website to find out more about the air quality management area and, and what plans we've got for the future. I think to improve air quality in and around Sobe Bridge, we still need massive amounts of change. Um, and it has to be a collective effort from all of us. So making sure that you get your vehicle serviced on a regular basis. You know, if you can afford to upgrade your vehicle to a cleaner one, then that's a really great thing to do too. But actually what we need to do is make sure that there are options for other forms of transport. We need to get people out of cars and onto public transport. We need to have decent cycle routes that people will actually use because they're not afraid to cycle on them. We need to make walking and active transport an option for people where it isn't at the moment. It can be something as simple as roundels on the pavement that say that it's only 10 minutes walk to get from A to B. But we need to look bigger too. We need a mass transport system in West Yorkshire. We want a clean, fast, reliable and affordable public transport system. It's no good if it doesn't do everything you need it to. It's a big deal. Air quality is a really big deal and we need to do what we can to address it.